Hey everyone, hope you're having a lovely Wednesday if you're watching this the day it goes live or just a lovely day if you're watching it on another day of the week. I'm going to be honest, I am approaching today's video with a bit of a heavy heart. This is a declutter of one of my favourite categories of makeup which is crayon eyeshadows. As you'll see I have a fair few of them and within that collection quite a few are the By Terry Ombre Black Stars. That's really where this category as a whole started for me was with my purchase which I believe was number 15 of the By Terry Ombre Black Stars. Felt that initial one was just so beautiful it spawned the rest of this as a category for me. Because I've got hooded eyes, the way that these work, particularly the By Terry ones, when you first put them on, if you buff them out, you don't get a lot of playtime, but you do get a bit of playtime with them to blend them as you like. And for me, if I just keep my eyes closed, let them set, and then open my eyes, they don't crease for the rest of the day. They also last in the waterline, the By Terry ones in particular. I had never had eyeshadows on my hooded eyes that worked like that without creasing, without needing a primer underneath. But they're obviously very expensive. And I think what I did here was I collected all of these By Terry ones, but knew they were quite expensive, so then kind of bought, like, there's some Topshop ones, there's a Gosh one there, it's a photo own brand. Went looking for sort of alternatives that I felt I would get more use out of. But what has happened is that I've gone to use some of these recently and they've been really dried up and really not fit for purpose anymore. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to declutter some of them. It's one of these ones because I love some of these so much. It's really heartbreaking, but it's also in a way a motivator to declutter more because the reason I'm having to declutter these is because they've gone off before I could get what I would have termed a satisfying amount of use out of them. And I don't want a collection that's big enough for that to be happening, especially not with products like these ones from By Terry that are very expensive. So only by reducing it am I going to have a collection that has a manageable amount of stuff in it that I will not need to declutter more in the future. And I know I'm not going to do that reduction by usage, so it is going to be decluttering. I'm not looking forward to being without some of these. The fact is I'm already without them because they're not usable and if I'd had less stuff in the first place, I would not be binning these with so much product left in them. So that's the approach of today, that's the mindset that I'm in. Not relishing this one, but absolutely a necessary declutter. So let's get on into it. I think I will find this side a bit easier than this side hence why they are organised as such. First of all, I'm going to get rid of this one. This one is from Gosh. It was a brand that you used to be able to get at Superdrug. I don't know if you can actually get it anymore or not. It's a kind of bluey grey. And the reason I know before I even swatch this to see what state it's in that I'm going to get rid of it is because I am very attracted to these kinds of colours. I've got quite a few of them, realistically. Things in the sort of bluey grey category really call out to me as a colour, but I don't think it actually suits me, especially now I have got red hair. I used to dye my hair blonde a number of years ago. These kind of cooler tones when I had blonder hair and had probably presented in a more cool toned way overall because of that, I could maybe get away with, but I think because I've got warm eyes and now I've gone to red hair, I don't think these shades really do much for me anymore, so I'm just going to definitely get rid of this one. I think I'll be able to pass this on to somebody else though because it seems to be performing okay so hopefully I can pass this on to someone rather than just having to bin it. In a similar vein I'm going to reach down the line here actually to this Topshop smokestick. Topshop obviously isn't even on the high street anymore to be able to go in and buy makeup from um, but this was way out of date even before Topshop actually closed. So this was a smokestick in the shade Dark Crystal. Now I have two of these, the other one is similar but with a green running through it. And what these were, I'm going to be honest as well, I've actually just had to sharpen this for the sheer purposes of swatching it for you. So that shows you how much use I was getting out of this. And I know I need to declutter this, like that decision is kind of made already, but I know as soon as I swatch this, I'm not going to want to. So here we go with the swatch. So this is kind of, they're in like a sort of dark base, like this one's a super, I think there is actually black in there rather than just being a super dark blue. But it's got a blue through it that kind of picks up the more you sort of intensify it, if you guys can see that, you know, the sort of sides of that swatch versus like the middle. So it's like almost black, but it's it's got enough blue running through it that it sort of presents as a dark blue. Now I just, I don't, as I said with this, I don't really suit cool tones I don't think anymore. So I'm going to get rid of this, but 
I did absolutely love this in its day, so it's it's quite a difficult one. Um, but again, it actually seems to be swatching all right. It was a bit kind of sticky there as I was moving it, but I think you could work with it, so I will see about passing that one on. So I think next it then makes sense to look at the other smoke stick. So this is the green one, and this in my head is quite similar to this, which is another product I really like, so I love both of these. Whether I can keep both is maybe a different matter, so let's swatch them. So first up we have the Topshop Smoke Stick. This one was the shade Magic Garden. So this is a very similar idea, but with green instead of blue. So that's it with kind of one layer and Do you know, this one I think is actually way more dried out than this one. I do, I actually still like, if you guys can get a good read on that colour on the camera, it's like almost like a glitter that's kind of running through it. I don't think the camera's really picking it up because it's quite a subtle reflect, but... So this one's got a green tinge, whereas this one was obviously blue. But I think you can even see in the swatch there that's gone a little bit patchier than the blue did, it's a little bit more dried out, so I think actually I'll declutter this one and this one will be for the bin, so that was actually easier than I thought, I thought I was going to have to really reason this one out. But the other product that I've got that's in a similar vein to this, and this one is newer so hopefully will not be dried out, Eagle Noir from NARS. Yeah, this one's absolutely fine. So it's not, the Topshop one was more of a sort of emerald green, whereas I feel like this is almost a sort of khaki green that's running through this one. Really, really pretty, absolutely fine, not dried up at all. So really pleased to say I will be keeping that one. So three gone, one keeping. I think we're on quite a good roll here. I think we will stick with the brand and look at my other NARS shadow stick. So this one is in the shade Ceros, and if you can see just here, there's actually a bit of a crack in the lid. That is something I would say about just the packaging of this category as a whole, is it's not always the best. And I think this is quite dried out, and that crack is very possibly why. And I think it's probably there because I know that these dry out if the lid isn't on them properly, so I probably pushed it right down and caused that myself. I bought this because it was used by Emma Stone's makeup artist for, um, I'm going to say the Oscars, and I think it was the year that La La Land came out. She was wearing this beautiful sort of vintage looking gold fringe dress and she wore the Mona lipstick by NARS, which I bought and that also spawned buying many more of the Audacious lipsticks. Um, but her whole look was by NARS and her makeup artist posted the products that she used. This was what was used on the eye. The whole look was just so up my street. It was so beautiful. But I do think this one is a bit dried out. So let's swatch it and find out. So it's uh, definitely so dried out that it has completely detached in the tube and just came out as a whole bit. So uh, in case anyone's interested, I'm not sure if this was a limited edition one, uh, but I will swatch it so that you can see what the the shade was. Well, do you know what? Actually, it's not. It doesn't actually feel that dried out, although it clearly has detached. The actual product feels quite creamy still. No, it's it's broken. I'm clearly using that as going to be more hassle than it's worth when it's going to fall out every time I open it, so I think we'll just declutter it. I was nearly going to talk myself into keeping it there because I do love the colour. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a kind of warm, goldy shade, but without being too warm. You know, it's not verging on to being too red, which I think sometimes if that happens, although I've said I don't really think I suit the cool shades of like the blue anymore, I think if I go too warm, it starts to emphasise like the redness in my complexion, which I don't want. And I think this is kind of on the right side of warm for me, but yeah, I'm... Uh, this is going to be more hassle to use. I think any time I went to use it, I would be like, oh, I know I need to like obviously end up cleaning my fingers straight after and everything. I'm probably not going to actually reach for it because of that. So I think we'll get rid of this one. So next up, I'm going to look at the Dazzle Stick in the shade Lightning Strike. This is by KVD Beauty. And I actually got this as a gift after I'd started onto my kind of no buy beauty rehab life. So this is a fairly recent addition to my collection in so far as I think it was maybe my birthday last year. So it's probably coming up on being in my collection for about a year because my birthday is next month. But 
yeah, it's uh, in comparison to the rest of them, it's fairly, it's the newest stick eyeshadow in my collection, I believe. So it definitely shouldn't be dried out or anything, but let's swatch it to see. So it's definitely not dried out. In fact, it almost actually feels wet on my eyes. So although this is like in a stick, so it belongs in this category, this one actually does crease on my eyes. This one does need a primer if you're going to use it. It's more kind of flaky because of the, I don't know if I bring it a bit closer, if you'll be able to almost see the texture. Like it's a bit more textured and a bit of flake. Um, there's not too much drop down, like it definitely kind of does adhere to itself, but it does crease, it needs a primer underneath it, which a lot of the other ones don't because of the formula or whatever so it's it's a slightly different formula to the rest of the ones that I have in this category but the colour is lovely definitely going to keep this one next up I think we'll look at these two little minis that I've got one is a uh, Bobbi Brown one is Laura Mercier both of these minis were gifts with purchases or whatever and I didn't pay for either of these let's look at the Bobbi Brown one and this is the shade taupe this is the sort of thing I think I could see myself project panning it's a sort of very everyday shade and in terms of just how sort of convenient this formula is, the main love for me of these formulas is that they are like, they can be one and done shadows. I do a lot of my makeup on the go. I'm really not a morning person. So if I wanted to do, say, my makeup on the train and at work, I could shove this in my bag, do that, have a little blending brush to just blend the edges and it would be a one and done kind of shade. But there is a but and it is that although this shadow is perfect for that exact situation that I've just described. If I'm totally honest, if I was at a Bobbi Brown counter and I was picking one of these for that, this probably isn't the shade that I would pick. Again, it's possibly just a little bit cool tone for my preferences. Like, it's fine, but it's just not, it's probably not what I would actually go for and I think I've actually only worn this once, so I'm just going to get rid of this one. And then the other mini that I've got is from Laura Mercier and it's the shade Au Natural. This is a very sort of similar vibe to the Bobbi Brown. Um, obviously it was in a gift with purchase. It's a sort of very neutral shade that's safe to put in. That kind of thing. I feel like I possibly prefer it actually to the Bobbi Brown. But you know what? I think everything I've said about the Bobbi Brown goes for this one. If, if I was at a counter picking a Laura Mercier one to pay for this absolutely, this would not be the shade that I would pick out. So I'm just going to declutter this one. Given what I said about the start, about how I'm getting rid of quite a lot of these because they've dried up and that that's really heartbreaking, if I get rid of these kinds of shades that there's nothing wrong with but that I wouldn't have chosen to bring in or that I'm not excited about using, that weeds out the excess in my collection so that rather than having, say, 10 of these that I am rotating through and can obviously use, say there's 30 days in a month, theoretically each could get three uses within a month. If I have five of them, then theoretically within a 30 day rotation, I could get six days use out of each of them. And obviously I have eyeshadow palettes and, you know, powder eyeshadows and things, so it's not quite as simple as that, but weeding out stuff that I'm just keeping because there's nothing wrong with it, but that I'm not excited about or don't absolutely love is contributing towards keeping my collection in an unmanageable state. Like, I want to have a collection where I love all the shades, that I'm excited to use all the shades and that I can then manage to rotate through them because there's few enough of them that I can get the use out of each of them. Does that make sense? So, nothing wrong with either of these two, but I'm not excited about them. I don't get that much use out of them. I don't really think to read, like I think about this one or like these two I would think about to use. These are not the shades I was thinking about to use, so these can both go. I was going to go clean off my arm there actually, but we've only got two more before we move on to the By Terry collection, so let's look at these two. First of all, I've got this one from Sephora in the shade Let It Snow. This is a white that I used to like putting in my waterline and things, so I will swatch this one up here. I feel like it's a little bit chalky, but I think it's I think it's still usable. I'm going to keep this one for now, I think, but look out for this being in my makeup box at the end of the month because I'm keeping it based on the swatch, but it is a little bit chalky, it's a little bit patchy in real life. I don't know if the camera will be... Yeah, I think you can see that on camera. It's kind of a bit textured more in some places than in others, so... I think it's okay, I think I can make it work, but I'm going to have to test it out properly on my eyes before I make that definite decision, so do look out for this being 
in my makeup box at the end of June. And then the last one that I got that's not a Bye Terry one is from Pat McGrath. So this is the Black Smudge Liner Eye Coal, which kind of makes it sound a bit like an eyeliner, but it's more of a, you know, in terms of size and whatever, it, it's more akin to a crayon eyeshadow. Um, so let's swatch this one. So, um, I think we can definitely say that one's dried up beyond. Yeah, we'll, we'll get rid of that one. That was easy. So Pat McGrath can go. In total, we've looked at 10 so far and of those 10, we're keeping three. So the NARS, Ego Noir, KVD, Lightning Strike and for now, Let It Snow by Sephora. So that brings us on to the Bye Terry portion of the video. So before I get into these, I just want to say across the board, the formula is good on all of these. I feel like usually, even within one product, within a brand, like something about the sort of different pigments required or whatever to make different colours means that the formulas can be slightly different, but I don't find that with these. But the other thing that counts across the board for all of these is that the packaging isn't great. The lids don't really stay on and I have basically pushed loads of my in real life friends into buying these and I know that they've all said the same thing like if you go on holiday or you take these out for the day in your makeup bag you'll go into your makeup bag or your travel bag or whatever and at some point in the process the lid will have come off they're really not very secure for a product that as I said if the lid's not on air's getting in and it's drying out it's a product that is essentially a cream product so you don't want it drying out although it's a kind of dry cream in the, the first place because it's in a stick formula so it's like a firm cream if that makes any sense um it is still a formula that once it dries out it doesn't perform very well so basically that's what we're looking for here is which ones are dried out i don't think there's any that i would have changed my mind on the colors of i don't think there's any colors that i'm going to have gone off with these but that may happen so we'll swatch them and we'll see but i think mainly here we're looking for the ones that have dried out to get rid of them hopefully not too many but We'll see what it's like. So let's start with number 15, the one that started it all. Number 15, Ombre Mercure. So funnily enough, like I knew I was filming this video today anyway, but I was actually in Space NK with Lauren yesterday and she picked out this shade and said how beautiful it was, which it is. And I feel like that's actually, that still feels all right, which is ironic given, as I said, this was the first one that I ever got. Um, it is a bit more cool toned, but there's kind of enough gold through it that it doesn't, it stays more neutral than properly cool in terms of what I've been saying about cool tones. So going to keep that one very happily. I think next to that we will swatch number three. This is Blonde Opal. And this one I think is one that has dried out and broken. Um, so this is one that I used quite a lot as like the base to an eyeshadow look. Oh, well, it's not. It doesn't seem too dried out. Is is this the right one? Yes, it is. I, I was second guessing myself there. So that is Blonde Opal. It's a really pretty sort of shimmery shade. As I said, really nice base to an eyeshadow. But this one has dried out enough that it has snapped off within the the casing. So if I do that and I kind of shake it, it's not falling out once I put it back in. I don't know, I'm actually, I'm quite tempted to keep it now because it's, it seems to be swatching okay and it's not falling out in a way that's going to make it super difficult to work with. So I think I'll maybe put this one in a maybe pile and come back to it at the end. I'm a bit torn now. I thought I was, I kind of thought I was getting rid of this one because I knew it was broken, but I think it's workable and it is really, really pretty. But I'd also kind of made my peace in a way with getting rid of this one. So I'm a bit like, if I've made my piece, do I just get rid of it because it is broken? I don't know. I'll come back to it. We'll come back to this one at the end. Next up, we'll do number 11, Beyond Gold. This, again, I think this was maybe like the second one that I bought. Uh, I think actually I went to buy this one first and it was out of stock. This one is a really yellow gold, um, really, really warm. That's still going out so beautifully, so definitely keeping this one. It's funny how some of them have dried out but some of them that are old within my collection are still fine. Um, so yeah, Beyond Gold, keeping. Next to Beyond Gold we will swatch Bronze Moon. 
Okay, I'm a bit torn in this one because see when that's swatched, I really, really like it. But this can get a bit insipid on the eyes It once, it, once you kind of put a blending brush around the edges. It can get a bit lost. I think this is another maybe. I think I need to come back to this one at the end. Okay, so next up we'll swatch number one, Black Pearl. So this is a black that's got, as the name suggests, a bit of a shimmer running through it. Yep, that one's swatching absolutely fine. It's as if these guys knew they were on the shopping block and decided to perform today in a way that I'm not quite convinced they've been performing on other days. Um, but I'm going to keep that one. If I'm doing like a smoky eye or something, I've got this one and then I've got a matte black and they tend to be what I go for as like the base to a smoky eye it would be that if it's a really dark one or the ombre mercure if it's more of a sort of taupey bronzy smoky eye or a grey um, this is like one of those sort of magical shades that whatever you pair it with it kind of pulls slightly that way um, so you can kind of make that one whatever you want it to be that would always be my sort of base for a a smoky eye. So keeping Black Pearl and next to it I will swatch number 12 which is the Black Matte. Again I think this one's absolutely fine. This is making me happier than I thought because I, I really didn't relish the prospect of decluttering loads of these in particular so Black Matte will keep. So we are down to the last two. These are quite similar. Number 5, number 6, Misty Rock and Frozen Quartz. One of these is definitely really dried out. can't quite remember which one it is, so let's swatch both of them and find out. So we will start with number six, Frozen Quartz. I think this is the one that's dried out. I actually seems to have swatched all right, but I feel like it was definitely this one that when I used it in my eyes, it felt really, really draggy. Um, so let me swatch Misty Rock just to compare the two. So last but not least, Misty Rock. That one, although I feel like it, they, they look quite similar, this one definitely feels a lot like... It went a lot easier so yeah it was definitely frozen quartz that was quite draggy when I used it on the eyes. So keeping Misty Rock and getting rid of frozen quartz. So in terms of where we are these are the definite keeps so we've got one two three four five six seven eight. Eight that we're keeping for definite then these are the ones that I'm getting rid of so I've got one two three four five six seven eight. Oh, eight and eight so that was nice and easy. And then I've got the two maybes, but I'm going to be honest, this one, although the colour is quite nice in the swatch, so that is Bronze Moon, which is the brown one here, just to remind you. I definitely know that when I use this, I feel like I spend ages putting it on, buffing out the edges, then having to build the colour back up again, then buffing it out. And what I really like about these shadows is the sort of one and done nature of them. And something about the colour of this one, it just doesn't quite work. The formula is still beautiful once it's set, it's set and you know I can get it to where I want it to be but it's it's so much work and that is just not actually what I want from these shadows. If I wanted to spend loads of time on my eyeshadows I'd be reaching for powders and I'd be spending that time kind of creating it with a brush and a bit more sort of control than these maybe give so I think I'm actually ready to say goodbye to this one and then I think I might keep this one for now. It is broken and there's part of me that's like, it's broken, just get rid of it. But as I said, it's not broken to the point, like if I open it and hold it upside down, it's not broken to the point that it's falling out. I feel like its days are definitely numbered because it's broken. And then from that point of view, and part of me is saying, if its days are numbered, do I just bite the bullet now and get rid of it? But that is this second one here. And I just think it's such a pretty colour. You know, it's really, really ideal for like, an inner corner highlight and I feel like I've done quite well getting rid of some other ones so I think its days are probably numbered but I'm going to keep Blonde Opal for now. That is an extra one in each category, one extra that we're getting rid of, one extra that we're keeping. So we're now keeping nine and getting rid of nine so a 50% reduction quantity wise. I don't know off the top of my head obviously what the values of these are but I will put in a screenshot so that you guys can see what this declutter actually has amounted to in terms of the amount of money that I have reduced my stash by. A 50% reduction in quantity which I'm really happy with. I know I definitely value wise won't have a 50% reduction because I'm keeping the majority of the by Terry's which I think are the most expensive ones. Having said that there's Pat McGrath there so Pat McGrath, NARS, we'll see. See how it, it plays out but quantity wise we've got a 50% reduction 
and I'm really really happy with that. That is everything for this video so thank you very much for watching it. At the end of June I'll need to do my six month halfway through the year check-in on my inventories so that is definitely motivating me to make sure I am decluttering where I can so there will be more declutters coming this month and do remember in June I am uploading every Wednesday in addition to my Sunday videos so make sure to keep an eye out for them and this is one of those Wednesday videos so I will see you on Sunday for my next one. Bye!